Good morning, if everybody could settle in. Good morning, I am Jesse Fuentes, the co-chair of the Puerto Rican Agenda here in Chicago. Welcome. We are gathered here today as a follow-up to the event that we had at Aspira High School on Friday night. An event in which we discussed three important topics. The economic crisis facing our island Puerto Rico, the campaign to release the longest standing political prisoner, Oscar Lopez Rivera, and the formation of a national Puerto Rican agenda. This was the first event in which elected officials and over 300 leaders from Illinois, Michigan, New York, Wisconsin, New Jersey, Ohio, and Pennsylvania came together to articulate these three points to make it known that we will be heard and to put, a action, a, to put an action plan together in place. This event formed three things that we would like to do in the, in the next steps so that we can address these three topics. On April 22nd and 23rd in New York, we will have a build-up for the summit that will coincide with the DNC in Pennsylvania in which we are organizing people to attend. The Puerto Rican agenda and leaders will announce a national agenda in which we would like to address these three points in which we are having this conversation in every single state as the presidential election uh, rises. And to make it known that Puerto Ricans will have a voice and will be the determining factor of this next presidential election as well as to denounce the idea of Congress forming a committee to address the budget of Puerto Rico, in which they will appoint somebody to look at the budget and then to make decisions in which they will say that Puerto Rico must pay for their budget. This committee and this agenda, the Puerto Rican agenda, is saying that Puerto Rico should not pay for the crisis that's happening in Puerto Rico because the United States is responsible for it. And we will voice it, we will, we will act on it, and we are going to ensure that Puerto Ricans all over the United States are aware, they are conscious, and they are on board to taking this plan. I, it is my, it is my great pleasure to introduce Fernando Grillo, the chair of Aspira of Illinois. Uh, last week uh, began uh, a very meaningful and historic dialogue in our community here in Chicago. Uh, this uh, dialogue mirrors this ongoing discussion that it's ha that's happening in Florida, it's happening in New York, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Uh, Puerto Ricanos have stood up uh, and have taken notice of what's happening. Uh, and the fine tradition of Aspira, of, of being aware of analysis and of action, we've, we, we've, we've stood up and it's time for our community to take action, to participate in the civic engagement, in the, in the legislative process, in advocacy, in making sure that members of Congress know the urgency. A reporter Friday night asked me, why now? Why are you having these meetings now? because we and the people on the island can no longer wait. This is a very and it affects not only those living in Puerto Rico, but those living here in the United States uh, and, and in the community at large. This will impact every single state of, of, of this union with the ones that I've mentioned uh, in, in a more significant way. This morning, uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce, and he doesn't really need any introduction, uh, our leader, uh, Congressman Luis Gutierrez. I cannot believe that uh, he's in his 24th year of service. He has consistently been a voice for us in Congress, and consistently been a voice for Puerto Rico in Congress. And I want to, I want to salute that this morning. And so, please uh, welcome him warmly as he comes and, and begins the dialogue. I also want to recognize uh, Commissioner Arroyo, who's here, Alderman Ariel de Goidas, Alderman, our friend here, uh, Roberto Maldonado. All of our friends are here. Well, yo me imagino caer aquí. Quiero estar tele mí. Así que yo me voy a dirigir a ustedes primeramente en español. Y luego, si tienen alguna pregunta, seré un poco más perfecto. Quiero primero decirle a, a, a la Asamblea Municipal 
Gracias por tenernos aquí en su casa, en el Instituto 26.
tú echas Puerto Rico para adelante. Mira, estar hablando de cupones, 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 cupones. ¿Cuándo vamos a hablar de trabajo, trabajo, empleo, trabajo que te lleva a la comunidad de la O sea, entonces ellos dicen, bueno, ustedes son responsables, ¿no? La responsabilidad es la relación colonial que existe entre Puerto Rico y los Estados Unidos. Una relación en la cual el Congreso de los Estados Unidos, yo quiero que ustedes entiendan esto para que estemos claros. Y esto no es un concepto radical. Esto es un concepto que ha sido adoptado por estadistas, por populares, por la inmensa mayoría de la gente que son, que entienden la relación entre que Puerto Rico es una colonia de Estados Unidos. ¿Y por qué yo lo digo? Porque los republicanos, al abrir la audiencia pública ante el Comité de Recursos Naturales, lo primero que pusieron en el primer párrafo es que que los poderes plenarios sobre Puerto Rico están en manos del Congreso de los Estados Unidos. Eso es básicamente, yo decirte a ti, yo te controlo. O sea, no es como que antes decían, no, pero es que tenemos una relación democrática. No, el Congreso dice, tenemos los poderes plenarios. El, la Corte Suprema, ¿todo lo que dijo la Corte Suprema? Puerto Rico le pertenece, le pertenece, una pertenencia a los Estados Unidos, pero no es parte de los Estados Unidos. O sea, mi papá, el papá de Roberto, el papá, mira, cualquiera de nuestros padres hubiese dicho eso en Puerto Rico, en el 1950, lo hubiese metido, metido preso por decir exactamente eso en las leyes de Mordaza. Entonces nos quieren preguntar a nosotros por qué es que estamos en la situación en la cual nosotros estamos. Nosotros queremos que Puerto Rico tenga trabajo que tenga la habilidad de crear, la creatividad del pueblo de Puerto Rico, ese poder de, de, de querer trabajar. La gente quiere trabajar, pero lo que te dicen es, bueno, no podemos incentivar. Yo creo que piensa en un momento. Sale un producto de la República Dominicana y el mismo producto sale de Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico no puede competir. ¿Sabe por qué? Porque los barcos que los dominicanos usan para exportar sus bienes y sus productos es mucho menos que lo que nosotros tenemos que pagar. ¿Por qué? Porque el Congreso decidió que Puerto Rico tenía que usar la marina mercante de banderas norteamericanas, la más costosa del mundo, en vez de ir al mercado. Y después los republicanos te dicen, we should have free enterprise. We should have free enterprise. And let the market dictate. Right? But now when it comes to Puerto Rico, no, en Puerto Rico, yo quiero que el pueblo de Puerto Rico utilice, quiero ser claro, cientos de millones de dólares para, para subsidiar la marina mercante de la nación más rica del mundo. Latinos are the, have the most medal of honor winners than any ethnicity. In, in, uh, in America. And I would say that we've done our part. As Rachel mentioned and the Congressman mentioned, the only way to really get their attention is at the ballot box. And if the de Democratic candidate or the Republican candidate are not talking about our issue, then we need not participate in this democracy because they just don't respect our community. So I would say that talk to your friends throughout the country, Puerto Rican, that are talking, make them aware of this issue. And it's important that they talk to their elected officials in that part of the country and make sure that we organize so that we can ensure that Puerto Rico has a future. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, pregunta. Bueno, no, quería que explicara un poquito más la opinión acerca de esta posibilidad de que no haya una administradora a Puerto Rico, pero para que no maneje la finanza. La boca, y hablo de la Espíritu Santo, el control board. Yo estoy opuesto a una junta de control sobre el futuro de Puerto Rico. Porque yo encuentro. Si tú escuchas bien el planteamiento 
de la administración del Tesoro, del Departamento del Tesoro, que vinieron a testificar Antonio Weiss, y yo creo que tú debes googlear eso después, ¿verdad? Es, es el verbo googlear. Yo que no aprendí la, la, la que lleva 100 años, la gente la nueva. Googlear, Antonio Weiss. Why do I bring that up? Por esto. Él vino y presentó un plan en el cual él dijo, es que Puerto Rico no ha sido muy sensato eh, en el uso de sus recursos financieros. Han desperdiciado dinero, no han tenido un control, no, no, no. Vimos antes el Congreso, está diciendo así. Entonces él dice, dice, por eso nosotros necesitamos tener una junta de control que el pueblo de Puerto Rico esté de acuerdo con esa junta de control. O sea, no te vamos a ayudar si primeramente tú no te pones de acuerdo que nosotros vamos a controlar la ayuda. O sea, más control. O sea, que Puerto Rico tiene tan poca soberanía, la poca que tiene sobre el control local, ahora queremos una junta de control. Now let me make it very clear. Antonio White said, we would never impose this on you. Pero si hay una crisis en Puerto Rico y lo primero que te dicen que te puede ayudar es si tú no aceptas esto, pues no hay ayuda. So really, he's saying, you either take this or there's no help for the people of Puerto Rico. Qué chévere, qué bueno que diga, nosotros no lo vamos a hacer sin el consentimiento del pueblo de Puerto Rico. Entonces yo le pregunté, ¿y dónde están los trabajos? ¿Dónde está la creación del Departamento del Tesoro para que Puerto Rico pueda crear avenidas y incentivar inversión? ¿Sabe lo que me dijo? Esa es la parte 2. Primero vamos a bregar con esto y luego regresaremos a un congreso controlado por republicanos que no le importa un divino Puerto Rico pero si le con... you know why they're interested in a control board? because the hedge funds, hedge funds in Washington D.C. I mean in, 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 on Wall Street in New York the hedge funds they want a control board because the basic purpose of a control board is to pay the debt and to pay hedge funds that pay 10 20, 25 cents on the dollar. Ellos no, ellos no compraron un bono por un dólar. Dice, si tú lo ves, dice un dólar. Ellos no pagaron un dólar. Ellos lo compraron por 10, 15, 20 centavos. Pero ahora quieren que nosotros le paguemos el dólar por lo que compraron por 20 centavos. So where's the haircut? Where's the negotiation around all this? So that's why they want to control it. So I'm not going to vote for a control board because I didn't go to Congress to make the bet because that's what they did. They bet. Here's what the hedge funds do. They bet on Greece. They bet on Argentina. And they're betting on Puerto Rico that the calamity and the crisis, they're going to get paid. They didn't go to Puerto Rico to help out. Hedge funds don't wake up in the morning and say, Ay, a mí me importa tanto que Puerto Rico tenga médico. Déjame comprar esos pobres. A mí me preocupa mucho que el crimen en Puerto Rico, quiero que policía tú puedas comprar bonos en Puerto Rico. Yo quiero que haya mejores maestros en la escuela, yo voy a comprar bonos en Puerto Rico. Bueno, ellos no compraron bonos en Puerto Rico para ayudar al pueblo puertorriqueño. Ellos compraron eso para llenar su, su bolsillo de dinero. So let's be clear in the context of what we have a control for. And lastly, the reason I ask you to Google Antonio Weiss is when you Google him, You're going to find who did he work for before working at the Treasury Department <coughs> for the same investment banking firms on Wall Street and the same hedge fund managers that own billions of dollars of debt. ¿Y tú crees que él se va a quedar como empleado público en el Congreso para el resto de su vida? He's going back to those hedge funds. And he's going back to the very people on Wall Street. And you know how they're going to receive him? Un mero de gracia. Nos hicieron ganar la, 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 nuestra ganancia. So look, I mean, if you're going to, why would you bring somebody, which by the way, he tried to get confirmed to the third highest ranking spot in Treasury, and Elizabeth Warren didn't let it happen. She said, no. He's not coming. 
here. And I just want to say that if there's one standard, I mean, Elizabeth Warren is a pretty high standard in terms of fiscal responsibility and now people looking on Wall Street. Um, so, that's why we say, por esto esa razón, nosotros decimos no. Que nos venga y nos ayude. Last is this. You know, Rupert Stoyan, here's what they do. It's like immigration. They're doing the same thing. <clears throat> and immigration, they say, well, if you let us build a wall and you give us uh, verification powers, right? And we get to do more raids and, um, and uh, we do all of these things. We build the wall, we do all more verification, right? We put more controls. Then we'll talk about legalization. Well, you know what they're going to do? They're going to do all of the bad things and then say, ah, I'm really not interested in that other part. Which is exactly what's going to happen with Puerto Rico. So you have to understand, it's not that we don't all want to get together and control, right? Have some kind of control mechanisms moving forward. But you got to do it all together. Because if you don't do it all together, what you're going to do is have a control board and not a solution to the crisis of Puerto Rico. So I simply say to the people here, do you really believe that if you send more food stamps, the $72 billion is going to disappear? If you send more healthcare dollars, the $72 billion is going to disappear? No, everything that they're proposing, which Republicans have not an agreement with, because it costs more money. Everything they're proposing, and I just want to share this, because I think it's important. Okay, do bad. When I pay my taxes, right? My income tax, I pay, I pay Social Security, I pay Medicaid, I pay Medicare, right? I pay those taxes. Right? Everybody has to pay them, right? You work in the United States. In Puerto Rico, you pay the same into the Social Security Medicare program. Same amount of money. Same amount of money as if you were working in the United States. But I just want to share with you. You only get 40% of the value back. That is to say that if I'm a doctor, I'm a hospital, and I apply for reimbursement under the Medicare program, I get only 40% of the reimbursement that a hospital in Chicago gets. And you can already tell this, it's already on the stress. I mean, Medicaid and Medicare are already on the stress in Puerto Rico. In Comandos de Tuprobet and healthcare, in Puerto Rico is 20% of the GDP. 20% of all economic activity on the island of Puerto Rico is health care. And what are they doing? And under Obamacare, Puerto Rico has received two cuts under Obamacare. In terms of <laughs> Illinois received more money for Medicaid and for health care. We received more money under Obamacare. But Puerto Rico, they received a 9% cut and an 11% cut last year. That's a 20% cut of money coming to Puerto Rico. I don't want to take any more, but that, that's why we say, si tú permite, se van a quedar con su junta de control, van a estar de fiesta en Wall Street, pero la tristeza en las calles de, de, de Puerto Rico y en los barrios de Puerto Rico va a ser algo trágico, si nosotros, si nosotros permitimos. ¿Any other questions? I got one question. In uh, 1980s, though, when Antonio Correa exposed the plan, it's called the 2020 plan, in the mountainous areas of Puerto Rico to exploit the copper mines, they found magnesium, nickel. And I understand that in the 80s, there was no infrastructure. Now there's an infrastructure. Now we got water. Now we got electricity. Now we got the transportation. And that that plan is going to be put in fruition for the year 220. 2020, and that Carlos Romero Barceló and Rivera Chas are literally buying land in the mountainous areas of Puerto Rico to make the multinational corporations accessible to exploit those mines. In addition to that, I wanted to know why o o President Obama has not addressed the issue on Puerto Rico to this very day. Yeah. He, he, he has, but he's done it insufficiently. He needs to do more. Look, we're gonna, I'm going to end with your question. Look, here's all we're saying. In Puerto Rico, has anybody stood on the north coast, on anywhere in Puerto Rico, and not in the mountains, because the mountains break up the air. Pero por qué parte de la costa, tú te paras, ¿verdad? And you face east, and there's always wind. 
And I have to tell you, one of my um, capitalist uh, bourgeois tendencies is to play golf. And I hate when I have to hit the ball anywhere facing. <laughs> Why? Because it's always wind. Why aren't we harnessing that wind in Puerto Rico to create energy? Every day, selling so Why aren't we harnessing? No. What we're continuing to use is we're continuing to use fossil fuels to run our energy system and our energy grid, which is an antiquated energy grid. And we need to be able to invite people to Puerto Rico to invest in our energy grid. We can continue to control it, but they can continue to come and invest if we can have an energy grid. Last thing is, tú sabes que había una sequía en Puerto Rico que duró casi cinco meses. Pero nada, todavía estamos en una isla tropical. I mean, you think of Puerto Rico, you never think of lack of water. But tú sabes por qué? The deforestation that you're talking about that occurs. And Puerto Rico is not building the reservoirs of water so that when it does rain, right, we can capture that rain and have it for. We're not setting up infrastructures in Puerto Rico. Porque en Puerto Rico todo es, dame más ayuda, más ayuda, más ayuda, más ayuda, en vez de desarrollar planes energéticos y planes de agua que permiten que nosotros podamos ser autosuficientes. I want to thank Ariel Royas. I want to thank the Cook County Commissioner. I want to thank Bill Villegas. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you again. We want to invite all of you to please, please plan on participating on April 22nd and April 23rd in, uh, in New York. Yes, in New York, uh, where the National Puerto Rican Agenda is really going to be unveiled and there's going to be a discussion over all of these issues again. So thanks again for coming.